Good day, viewers. Walter here. I'm kind of on my own this week. Terry Mary's off visiting the grandkids for a few days. I want to go to Lowe's and get some tomato plants today. And I thought I'd share a little railroad story with you while we're driving and just combine it with a driving video. See if anything exciting happens along the way. But anyway, I'm going to be talking railroad today. If you're interested, be sure to look down there and give me a like and even subscribe if you think about it. Anyway, this is Pete Walpar. Welcome to my blog. We'll uh, do a little railroad talking today. Go with me, you better come on, let's go. You ever think about shoving your hand up into a mailbox without looking? What if some big old wonky spider was up in there waiting to bite me? I should make a habit of looking in that box before I reach in there. Many of my viewers know that for a good 34 years of my life, I was a railroader. Specifically, uh, let's close this window before the wind comes in. <clears throat> Specifically, I was a railway carman. And what a railway carman does is basically repair freight cars. Anything mechanical that needs to be repaired, that's what you do inspecting them and um, inspecting and repairing them well <clears throat> about the last 20 years of my career I was what they call an outline point carman I worked out of, based out of Griffin Georgia but they got to where they would send me all over the state to do repairs to cars. Working alone, I just kind of had to work my own schedule to get things done the best I could. And I usually got the job done. One of my viewers recently commented he was going to be a carman for the TTX company. I wish him well, but it brings us... I figured I'd tell you a little story about being a carman today. He made a comment on one of my older videos about um, the life of a railway carman. Sometimes I might repeat stories or repeat things that I've told in another video. I've made so many hundreds of videos. I don't think I've ever told this story before. Well, let's back up a little. job to repair not only repair rail cars but to repair safety appliances and things like that that fall under the category of the Federal Railway Administration. The Federal Railway Administration goes around checking different railroads. If they didn't keep them, if they didn't check the railroads, they wouldn't be no reason to keep them on. 
all safety appliances, things like your air brakes, brake shoes, anything to do with they would pertain to safety when it comes to operating a safe railroad. Well, that's enough on that. I don't want to bore you too much, but quite often the Federal Railway Administration would go to a location and inspect the railroad cars. This particular trip, uh, FRA man, let's just use his first name. His name was Horace, and he was quite sociable. You could talk to him, be honest with him, and he would treat you better. He did, they didn't put up with no crap like somebody might want to try to pull the wool over their eyes. So he went out uh, on a little town in a, on a short line railroad that used to be part of the Central of Georgia, Georgia Railroad, one of those out there on the east side of Georgia. I won't give the name of the town. But this particular little town had a little small depot and um, two railroads ran through that town. CSX and this little short line railroad. Well, the short line railroad was property of the North Southern. So it fell under North Southern's responsibility to repair those cars. But he went out to this little town on a Friday night, Friday afternoon, I should say. Inspected a bunch of cars. I remember there was a lot of wood chip hoppers and pulpwood cars and maintenance weight gondolas. There was probably 30 or 40 cars in this little train that had been assembled and was getting ready to leave town. And I imagine it was either CSX or the short line would take it over or hit the interchange and haul it on down the road. They had to be repaired. He, he found like maybe 20 or 30 defects. I walked along with him while he was inspecting the trains. So I knew exactly what he had found. He gave me a list of things that are wrong. You gotta remember, this is like Friday night. The train's loaded, ready to go. You wouldn't want to delay that freight by saying, okay, I'll come back Monday. Work had to be done that day. Well, all I had was my railroad truck, and I kept quite a few supplies on the car, on the truck, like ladder treads and whip nuts and bolts and brake shoes and whatever I needed to repair cars. Quite often, I, if it wasn't too many bad older cars, I'd have enough supplies with me to get the job done. Well, he hands me this list, and it's right at dark 30. He said, I wish y'all well, and handed me this list, and departed for the day. Well, it's not long till dark. Here I am with a list of 25, 30 defects, and I'm on overtime already. My shift is done come and gone. I work today's shift. Well, we're going to make some overtime tonight. I can't run off and leave these defects. They gotta be done because sometime over the weekend they're gonna pick up this train and go. And if the defects get away without being repaired, the defects don't go away. They're still defects and they have to be taken care of. So somewhere out on the Norfolk Southern system, some carman's gonna get a list of cars that never got repaired. He's gotta go chase them down. I've had to chase them down before too. You might find one in an industry, one at another railroad. One's done gone somewhere else. And trains split up and go everywhere. So I know that repairs have got to be done on the car. I hope this this story might drag out into two parts, and I'm sorry about that. So I commenced to repair these cars. Uh, like one of them probably had a, a big grab iron. I think that two torches and get all my tools set up and drive down the side of the cars. You gotta remember I'm the only one there so I don't have to worry about no other trains or anybody who's gonna be moving around but I do my proper setting up blue flags and things to do it properly. I'm working on these cars and I'm knocking one out but there another. It's done got dark. It's about Eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. And I get 
forget almost all of them done. But one of the cars was an old maintenance away car. Well, I don't remember if it was a maintenance away or not. It had cast iron brake shoes. Here I am with no cast iron brake shoes in the truck. It's not quite common that most brake shoes around are composition brake shoes, which is a man-made material. <clears throat> well, I got everything repaired except for this one cast iron brake shoe. Now, what the hell am I going to do? I, I ain't leaving here saying I didn't get them all done. It's getting on close to midnight now, and I'm, I'm pondering what to do. But let's see if I can stick a composition shoe on there. And it can be done on the jury rigging. But no, we want to do this job right. You got to thinking about a carman that used to work up at Tacoa. He's not with us anymore. His name was B.G. Brown. B.G. got in a predicament like that one time, and he told me what he did. He needed a coupler for a car. A coupler broke in one of the Norfolk Southern trains. He had no coupler. So what he did was went over to the CSX Railroad and found an old CSX maintenance away car somewhere and stole the coupler right out of the car. Evidently they probably weren't using the equipment. He got his train gone by stealing a coupler from the CSX Railroad. Might have been known as L and N Railroad then. So I thought, man, you sure got away with some stuff there. You could have been in real trouble. But I got to thinking about it. here. I am needing a brake shoe. It just so happens that CSX is right down the road. They run through this same ter uh, territory, and I need a cast iron brake shoe. Well, the cast iron brake shoe that was defective on this Norfolk Southern car was real thin. It might have been a quarter of an inch thick. It wasn't completely worn out. It was still had some use left in it, even though it was down to the little four hour point that it legally had to be changed. So, I get this brilliant idea. We go out to the CSX at midnight, stealing a brake shoe. So, I get that old crummy brake shoe that wore out off of this old car. I drive down to the CSX. You know, there's there's nobody around. I see these maintenance away cars, gondolas, they have hanger type brake beams, old style. And I walk down there and look around these cars. Look and make sure there ain't no cops are looking. It's almost downtown. And I find a really nice brake shoe. Well, I can use that brake shoe to replace the one that needs to be put on the Norfolk Southern car. I can't legally charge for it. We had to make repair bills and charge the railroads for d repairs that we had to do if it was a handling line responsibility. We had to make a ticket and charge them, but I ain't gonna charge nobody something. That's, that's kind of really dishonest so I'll just give them the brake shoe so I can honestly say the repair was made so when it comes time to doing the billing I'm not going to charge for that brake shoe well I get the brake shoe off the CSX's car and put the old crummy one back on their car so I can wind their handbrake back up I wouldn't want to go off and leave a car with no handbrake on it got back over to this little short line railroad that I was working on. Went back to my car and put that brake shoe on it. And by this time, it's like one o'clock in the morning. And I've got to drive 60, 70 miles to get home that night. But I finished my repairs and I trucked it on down the road. That was a little story that I wanted to share with you. I had a fax machine at home when I got home and it was my own personal fax machine, but I made a list of all the cars that I still had the FRA report in my hand. I sent a copy of the FRA report and um, a list of the repairs that were done. Stuck them in my fax machine and faxed them to the 
home office in Atlanta at Inman Yards. Went on home and got my job done. It was lots of times I had to use my own initiative to get a job done when you're out there working by yourself. Most often you had somebody with you, but I worked by myself a lot. Thank you.